ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And did you know that Blender used to have a built-in game engine? It did, actually, up until Blender 2.79. And this felt like yesterday to me, but uh, no, it wasn't. Apparently, this was back in April of 2018 that I covered this. So going on like nine years ago, Blender removed the game engine from Blender. That was for the release of Blender 2.79. But people have kept this dream alive. And there's a lot to like about the dream. The idea of creating your game content and your game itself in the same same tool so you can model and texture and then animate and then actually have game logic and all of that all in one place there's a lot of appeal to that and so some people have tried to keep this dream alive one of them obviously is UPBGE um, this one is interesting because it's kept up to date with current releases of Blender but at the same time it's got it's kind of one of the major flaws that killed the usefulness of the Blender game engine in my opinion and that is that Blender itself is licensed under the GPL v3 license that means things that are created in it, not, um, you know, models, etc., but uh, software created from it also had to be GPLv3, and that holds true for UPBGE. On top of that, we also have Armory 3D. Now, Armory 3D is a very cool project. I did a tutorial series on when this came out. This one basically hosts a, an open source game engine inside of Blender. You actually use the hacks programming language to create your games there. Unfortunately, the primary developer behind Armory 3D seems to have had, you know, other uh, priorities. Uh, he still works on Armory 3D, but it is more his other things that he's focused on. Uh, so one of the ones I need to revisit at some point in time to see what the current state of Armory 3D is, but that is another project out there. And then we have the topic of today's video, and that is Range Engine. Now, I actually looked at Range Engine four-ish years ago, I think, and we've had some pretty major updates since then. So today what we're going to be doing is checking out Range Engine itself, uh, finding out what is new in the 1.6 six release. Now, one thing to know about this is they actually do a primary release and then they have a newer re release that is for patrons only. One of those things you definitely want to be aware of, we're going to be dealing with this version over here. Now, interestingly enough, if I click this, I actually get the wrong release notes. I get 1.5a. So if you want to read about this detail, you actually have to go to news, what's new, uh, and then you will find, oh, no, not there, news, news, and then you'll find the 1.6 link and it will bring you to the right spot. So by the way, if you're on the range engine team, your link doesn't work, something to be aware of. So there was a bunch of new things they added in this 1.6 release, including like new input system, mesh builder, um, rendering functionality and so on. So lots of like with range engine 1.6, we're gonna jump in and take a look at it. Now, before we do that, a quick heads up, there is an audio bundle going on over on Avani Sound. This is the audio arsenal bundle. This was previously on Humble. Now it is directly on Avani for the next two weeks. Uh, you can get a ton of dynamic soundtracks and sound effects for your game. On top of that, regardless to which game engine you're using, you're gonna find that they've got a number of plugins. These are for doing dynamic soundtracks. These are for doing 3D audio. I'm actually gonna be covering this one in more depth later on. So if you're looking for some soundtracks or sound effects for your game, regardless to which game engine you use, do be sure to check this one out. Also, if you use my link, it does help support me. So if you fire up Range, range Engine, you're gonna notice something about it right away. This is actually built on Blender, specifically Blender uh, 2.79. And that is really confusing to me, to be honest, uh, because I have, um, muscle memory now for the 3.x branch and whoever thought the idea of right click select was i thought it was stupid back then i think it's stupid now and it's back so again right click is a, a select here drives me absolutely batty so this is an old version of blender and they keep updating the game engine aspect of it so this is a custom build of blender that still has the game engine components in it from when they stripped them out years ago but they've continued to do things like upgrade the opengl version add new rendering capabilities add new uh, programming capabilities and so on. So here we're looking at this is specifically range engine. Uh, so you can see it's Blender 2.79 sub 7 plus 3.0 partial uh, whatever. Uh, this is the one we were just looking at a second ago. This is range engine 1.6. There is a newer version available for the patrons. By the way, this is a GPL v3 license and it should be open source. But interestingly enough, I can't find the repository and I don't know how that actually works. Anyways, here you can see an example of it in action. It uses, right here, you'll see there is a play button so you can actually see your game running. So here we are running around the world. Doink, doink, doink. So this has got vehicle physics and so on. One such example of what this engine is all about. Uh, you'll see over here, this is being implemented. So this guy, uh, this vehicle over here has uh, 
a vehicle controller that has been attached to it. You can see over here, and then you've got different parameters you can add to like dampness and um, inertia, friction, and so on. Uh, and then over here, you can actually see the code. So that is the vehicle that Python code that is actually controlling this controller. So you get an idea of the capabilities there. On top of that, it uses this uh, visual programming language. I'll show you case that in just a second. So here is one such example. Here is another one. So this one I actually downloaded from the web. I'll show you this later on. So this is uh, a simple spiral game uh, implemented using uh, the engine. Again, I'm right click selecting instead of moving around, which drives me absolutely batty. But you're going to see uh, somewhere there is your character uh, over here. All right. So there is your characters right there. So a Spyro S character that been implemented in here. Uh, this one is using a lot of um, the controls like so. So let's go find uh, one of these characters that has a controller attached to it. Here you can see. So here is an example of the programming system here. And again, it's also using the animation system that we're used to over there. So here you can see all the programming stuff. Let me just turn my controller on quickly. Make sure that's synced up. All right. And now let's go ahead and run this one. So once again, play icon like so. And gives you an idea of what kind of games you could create using the Blender game engine. This is a more in-depth example. I'll show you where you can go ahead and download this. As you see from the left-hand side, there's a number of Python scripts available as well. So you got a menu over here. Let's resume our game. And then you got animation, like so, camera controlling, uh, collectibles. You've got uh, fire breathing with one of these. Yeah, so here we can do fire breathing. Uh, we can do a double jump climb. I never actually played the original Spyro, to be honest, but you get an idea of what kind of functionality is available there. And this is the kind of game that you can create using this engine. So again, another example, this one has a lot more detail of what it's all about. So let me just go out of the run mode here and you get an idea from, oops, did not mean to hit play again. Let me just stop that and then come on down here. And unfortunately, we also have the Blender uh, 2.79 UI system here. So you can see the various different controls being done over here. Um, and then on top of that, we have a variety of Python scripts as well. So let's go take a look at what is controlling this guy. Oh, I hate going back in time. That's probably my biggest complaint. And that's one of the things I really like with UPBGE is that it is uh, more uh, modern. So it's, it's using the current version of Blender, not Blender 2.79 for its functionality. So you can see, again, a variety of the scripts that are set here as well. You can add components, game components onto your game. And let's just look at a very simple thing from the very beginning. So I'm gonna create myself a new project, file, new, reload, startup. All right, so here you see, simple. This is your kind of hello world of examples. Um, and let me show you the programming functionality. So let's go over here uh, and it is done using the logic brick editor. So here you can see various different logic bricks that can control. So I've got my uh, cube select. I think I got my cube select. So I'll select my cube right here and let's add a logic to it. So you see cube control over here. We'll add a sensor and we'll do this on keyboard. So on the keyboard, when you hit the space key, we need to do something. So we'll add a controller. We'll add an and controller and basically wire here to here. So that will happen. So when the space key is done, this will fire and then it'll run this actuator. You can think of actuators like verbs, things that will happen. And what we're gonna do here is we'll add a motion. So right here, and we will add Z is up, I believe. So let's go ahead, location Z, and we'll add, oops, I did not mean to do it that way, but yeah, let's do it that way. All right, so here, so we'll add a little bit to the Y axis. So there is how it works. And we'll wire that in right there. So let's do another one here. So we'll add a sensor. Uh, also on keyboard like so, and we'll do this one on the escape key. Uh, once again, we'll do another and controller, drag that in, connect over here. And then when we exit out, we'll add another actuator. And this is gonna be game, I believe, to exit the game. And then we'll go here say quick game. All right, so when we hit the escape key, we will quit our game. So this is one way of doing your programming. Of course, you have a full Python API. You can do your game coding that way as well. And we will go ahead and run our demo here. So here you can see, now I've hit the space bar. We move up a bit. Now, the cool thing here is this is fully integrated into Blender. Blender also used to have physics built in, something that they're actually adding back. So if I find the physics tab, so I think that's this one right here. I could go ahead with this object, make this uh, turn it on. So let's go ahead and make this a dynamic object with gravity and so on. And you see a bunch of objects came over here. So now I could have applied a force or torque or so on. Uh, but I can just go ahead with this, the same setting I had before. And just by making that a dynamic object. Oops, why are you? Why are you getting force up? Uh, let me just try that one more time. Is my gravity upside down? 
Uh, anyways, you, you get an idea. So you have the full integrated gravity. You've got your controls for it over here, what you can do with it. Uh, again, I'm not really 100% certain why gravity is going in the wrong direction, but you get an idea of what you're dealing with here for the range engine. So what range engine essentially is, is an ongoing development of the original Blender game engine. On top of that, they've actually built some tooling in here as well that gets around that GPL v3 problem. There is this proxy format in the middle that you can use something called range armor, which is, uh, I believe, MIT licensed. I'm not 100% on that one, but this allows you to basically create your game external to the Blender game engine using appropriate libraries, etc., so that it is not GPL. So then you can, you can distribute your game in a normal manner. That is something that uh, Armory 3D doesn't have to deal with, but UPBGE does. Same with the original Blender game engine. So that GPL v3 limitation, uh, if you view it as a limitation, if you want to create a game, but you don't want to release the sources for it, this allows you to get around that. So that is Range Engine 1.6. We come back here, you will find out they are talking about actually releasing uh, 2.0. Uh, I did find that it was on a display. I looked at it earlier on. I guess I go back to what's new. Go on down here. You're going to see Range Engine 2.0 is coming, and that's a pretty big rewrite. Has a new rendering engine, OpenGL uh, v3.3 support, uh, range nodes, GPU skinning, etc., are all coming. So this is coming on later this year. Uh, but there's new releases here, and there are some really cool things they built in here. For example, 3D audio that will automatically do reverb there. There is a new sky shader. So if I head on back over here, you can see I can come over here to the world, you see how these things are integrated in. And I can say, okay, set up the sky, I can have it have stars or not have stars by, uh, where is stars? All right, bump, 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 render stars. All right, there, so we have stars or no stars, we can change the color of our sky, right there, the result, there, and then immediately you will see uh, the uh, resulting change in the sky as well, right there. So you can, uh, and then again, you can have stars or no stars and so on. So that has been added in there as well. So they've added a bunch of functionality that did not exist back in the days of the original Blender game engine, uh, but you are still working with Blender 2.79. And I gotta say, as someone who has moved on to Blender 3 and then Blender 4, I look at Blender um, 2.8 as the biggest step forward from a UI perspective, and then it's just improved from there. This uh, is a hard thing to go back to, uh, the old school way of, of using Blender. But one of those things to be aware of, if you wanted to work with the way that Blender game engine used to be, this option is out there and it kept it going. So here you can also see, uh, so Range Engine, our license is GPL, uh, GNU GPL, but uh, uses its own exporter with the MIT license. So Range Armor is a tool, allows you to package your game data files and launch them separate from the Blender player executable. So this was the infective part of GPL v3 that made it so your own game logic had to. So in summary, the software and source code of Range Engine are bound by the GNU GPL, but the Range Armor and the resource files that it creates are not. So this is a way of creating basically a player that doesn't have the GPL v3 encumbrances that uh, the original Blender game engine does and that I do honestly believe that UPPGE is still bound by as well. So that's definitely one of the things in favor of the range engine. Um, yeah, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. So if you're interested in checking it out, Range Engine is available at rangeengine.tech. Now, interestingly enough, once again, this is um, an open source project. This is GPLv3, uh, but for the life of me, I cannot find the repository. Oops, that was... Uh, okay, so here we go, GitHub, we go look at all the various different repositories that are available, and you'll find uh, the website, the range armor, that's the MIT add-on I just talked about, add-ons, components menu, docs, in the wiki, I don't know where the source code is for this, and it's the fact that this is GPLv3, um, it's got to be somewhere, and it can't be paywalled behind their patron, which is how uh, development for this is done. So if you want to have access uh, to these early versions, they do have patron support versions of it, so you can get the newest release. So there's always one preview release ahead uh, that you can get access, so early access to um, range engine releases. But somewhere, the source code needs to be somewhere. I don't actually know where it is. I don't know what's going on there. I may have just not been able to find it, one of those things to be aware of. But that is one of those things to know about when it comes to range engine. And the same way as if you want to contribute to it, I don't know where the repository is. Maybe you do know. Uh, if you do know, let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Range Engine, basically uh, the son of Blender Game Engine, the closest thing you're going to find to 
the Blender game engine as it existed before, but they've added a bunch of things and they continue to add new things over time. New renderer, new GL support, um, 3D audio, that kind of stuff. So let me know what you think. Did you use Blender game engine back in the day? Are you using it today? And if you are using Blender as a game engine, are you using um, this range engine or are you using UPBGE or are you using Armory? And if so, why did you pick it? All right, let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.